The Darkest Hour 2017 was a great film overall, and I think it did a great job capturing the political times, but the political antagonism and the dissensions in the United Kingdom during the Second World War. For the main cast, Gary Oldman, who had to study Churchill's speeches and attitude with the Churchill scholar for a year, plays Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, who is in office from 1940 to 1945 and again from 1951 to 1955. Then we have David Schofield, who played Clement Attlee, the leader of the opposition. Lily James, who played Elizabeth Layden, who was Churchill's personal secretary, had to practice typewriting for over a month. So overall, everything was well portrayed and accurate in this film. In the first opening scene in Parliament, Clement Attlee tells the House that the current Prime Minister, Neville Chamberlain, is too weak to lead the country in the face of the Nazi onslaught. The leader of the opposition, Clement Attlee. No doubt about my feelings regarding Mr. Chamberlain's future as Prime Minister. Proved himself incapable of leading us in wartime. In the next scene, Neville Chamberlain meets with a few Conservative Party members and argues that his successor should be Edward Wood, but he claims that he doesn't feel like he should be the Prime Minister. So they decide to choose Winston Churchill as his successor and as a Prime Minister, which the Labour opposition are much more pleased with. We must now select my successor, someone with new strength to form a Government. During Churchill's first speech in Parliament, he addresses the House in a keen matter that in order to secure victory, he must wage war with Germany. Churchill later addresses the nation on the radio and claims that the British will defeat the enemies. However, when he returns home to discuss the radio talk with his wife, he tells his wife that the British troops are in full retreat. And his wife Clementine says that he did the right thing, and it was best that he didn't try to worry the British people. We are going live. In one moment, damn you! have broken through the French defenses north of the Maginot Line. And strong columns of the army, of course, now ravaging the open country. Later, Elizabeth informs Churchill that there was a photo of him in the newspaper where Churchill used his pointer and middle finger to create a V which represents victory. However, his palms are facing in, which created a symbol which meant up your bum, and Churchill has a good laugh at that. In the poor quarters, that gesture means something else. What does it mean? Well, I wouldn't have to say, sir. I was captured by the boar. I spent time in a South African prison. Up your bum. And I just like the accuracy of this film with the portrayal of Winston Churchill's attitude, his resilience and his strengths and characteristics. So Churchill is later informed that the British troops are stranded in Dunkirk and Churchill decides to send an extra 4,000 British troops to help rescue the stranded troops. So Churchill decides to phone the US President Franklin Roosevelt to persuade him into letting Britain receive 50 or 40 destroyers to help the stranded troops in Dunkirk. But Roosevelt responds to Churchill and informs him that the US Congress passed the Neutrality Act in the 1930s, which prohibits the US from exporting military equipment to foreign nations and Roosevelt is strictly reluctant to send the war equipment to Britain due to Roosevelt being prevented by the act. 
If you could loan us just uh, uh, 50 older destroyers, uh, or, or even 40 would do. But just not possible, I'm afraid. The Neutrality Act we signed last year has tied my hands. Just can't swing it. So Churchill is now scrambling to solve this issue with the stranded British troops. So he phones Admiral Bertram Ramsey to send as many operation boats out of the evacuation as possible. The leader of the House of Lords, Lord Halifax, holds a meeting with a few conservative lords about negotiating peace talks. And due to Lord Halifax's contradicting views, Lord Halifax believes that Britain should attempt to negotiate with Hitler. For that, we need an army. General Child Brigadier Nicholson, the Germans must not reach the sea. Not before we, we, we get our boys off of that bloody beach. And during that meeting, I just like how Gary Oldman says, quote, Will you just stop interrupting me while I'm interrupting you? which also portrays just Churchill's characteristics and strength. Lord Halifax later tells Churchill that he has 24 hours to create a peace negotiation or they will vote in no confidence in Churchill, which will force Churchill to resign. Churchill is informed later that Belgium has surrendered and that Italy will also surrender following suit with Belgium and that Britain needs to prepare to defend themselves from being attacked by the Nazis. So with Churchill feeling pressured, he decides to negotiate peace talks with Hitler to ensure that Britain maintains their independence. King George VI meets with Churchill in regards to Mussolini's support of Hitler and the threat of those two bonding as a force, and King George also expresses his support towards Churchill. Churchill later speaks to Admiral Ramsey and says they will send 860 vessels to Dunkirk. Later, Churchill takes the underground and everyone is surprised to see him on the tube and everybody has a laugh with Churchill after his cigar is lit by a person on the tube. This is the underground! Does anyone have a match? Say, So everybody starts introducing themselves to Churchill. However, this scene did not happen in real life. Churchill then asks if anybody on the tube would like to see Churchill himself hold a peace agreement with Hitler, and everybody responds with never. If we ask nicely, get very favorable terms from Mr. Hitler if we enter into a peace deal with him right now. What would you say to that? Never. 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 Later on, Churchill addresses his war cabinet and states that there should be no negotiated peace. And near the end of the film, Churchill addresses Parliament, in which Churchill says that Britain will ride out the war, and where Churchill says his most significant quote, quote, We shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And the final scene concluded with Churchill walking down the chamber floor with members of parliament tossing their papers up in the air as Churchill exits the chamber. <laughs>